you've seen me do a lot of work with this vehicle in other videos. A lot of people have asked about it, so I figure I'll do a little uh, short one today, uh, once over on this little toy here. Now I've been shooting footage for this for a while, because uh, I was going to get around to it someday. And the interesting thing about that is there's a lot of old projects that are already finished and done, but in the background in the early stages. So uh, I'm going to put in some arrows and links and, you know, let you know when one of the projects is uh, one I have a video on, just in case you're interested in seeing a little more about it. Uh, this is a World War II half track. Uh, some made sometime early 40s, it looks like. Uh, the original serial number had it being an M3A1, which is a troop carrier. And then it was repurposed. Let's see. According to the data plate, it was repurposed as an M16A1, which would be a gun carrier. I got this over 10 years ago. I've had it for a long time. I really need to do absolutely nothing to it. It just starts and drives and keeps running every time. Let me show you some of the features. Now, being this is originally an armored vehicle, you actually have doors here over the radiator. Those are on pivots so that uh, there's supposed to be a control in the cab. It's broken. But when you pull a cable, these shut down so gunfire can't get into your radiator. Uh, there is shields over the uh, knuckles here again to keep you going in whatever happens the wheels these are actually bolt together combat wheels kind of like bead locks so even if your tire goes flat it stays on and you keep driving uh, this bumper here was added this is not an original one it looks like people put some really big weights on it though uh, that's what i think that was for now under the hood well the hood itself is quarter inch thick uh, armor plating so it's a little heavy and then under the hood we have a white six cylinder motor a big old flathead and you can still see all the original olive drab paint big old honk and oil filter here uh, air intake remote filter uh, there's other stuff that did other things at some point i've never had any of that hooked up um, <clears throat> I have a handy tool here. When the carburetor floods, I just tap it and that corrects the float. So that's handy. Um, we've got the doors too. They are also armor plate. So they close with authority. Latches don't work though. Uh, we have tracks, of course. Uh, here you can see where some of the torch cut off the back. Um, these are um really really heavy really old i actually had to replace one of these once uh, it is not a pleasant experience uh, it helps if you have a forklift and a lot of time now all the suspension uh, is down here in these bogey wheels those are the ones that they pivot there then they go into a pivot up here and there's a set of springs here some real big coil type springs under there they're not regular coils but that's what they do and so that is the only thing that's suspended so when you drive these are what moves up and down now this wheel rigidly bolted to the axle to the frame that wheel is on a pivot to adjust it uh, for the track tension but that doesn't really move when you're driving uh, idler wheel here to hold it up so you can run the the exhaust straight through the track none of this stuff up here moves only the things down there now, these are the track adjusters. There actually is an adjustment here to change the tension on this back wheel so you can get the tension on those belts right. Uh, this is all non-factory. It looks like someone had a um, fifth wheel type hitch on this at one point for hauling stuff. Uh, let's go around the back. We have the poles. Three quarter inch thick steel cable. Uh, it's got a pintle hook and this is on a pivot so that can adjust with the train so it can handle trailers in any rough terrain uh, these poles are adjustable you actually have a chain up there 
You can change the angle to adjust the reach and the uh, height of it. So this boom is actually pretty darn tall. Uh, you have to worry about things like overhead power lines because uh, it gets pretty close. However, hot air balloons, those are uh, higher up. You don't have to worry about those. As you can see, the hot air balloons do pass over quite easily. Here we have a Braden Winch non-factory. I don't know what it was from. It looks like it was olive drab, so it's probably something military. But I think this is a 30-ton model, which is way too big. But, you know, way too big doesn't hurt. Big old pumpkin. This one actually, the axle broke on this one. It happened to the previous owner. He broke the axle and it pulled out the center section and replaced it. I had the old center section and the axles came with it. But uh, just sort of like a 9-inch Ford, just, you know, bigger. Now, here in the interior, or what we call an interior, we have a seat. It has a hinge so it can fold forward. Um, probably the most uncomfortable seat there is. Uh, that is what you will get splinters every time you sit on it, and then just bare steel. Uh, and you sit really low in this, so you're, the door is really high, it's about shoulder height, again to keep you away from gunfire, but it's really not comfortable. Your feet stick out pretty far straight, notice that your butt is actually below the pedals over there. You can see the seating position is not comfy. This is not a hang your arm on the door kind of vehicle, besides the fact the door is sharp and narrow. But if I were getting shot at, I'd like the smallest window possible. So I think the original users were okay with that one. But anyway, usual controls, um, you know, gas brake, all that. Four speed stick here. Then we have the PTO, forward and reverse there. We have the emergency brake here, which is good because that's the only brake in this whole thing that works. Uh, and then we have the sticks for four wheel drive in and out. Well, front drive in and out because, you know, it doesn't have four wheels. And then high and low range. Uh, glove box has stuff in it and works. Uh, conveniently, the previous owner painted all the gauges yellow, so uh, I don't have to worry about oil pressure or temperature or anything because you can't tell. Uh, I have an ignition switch, uh, starter button, fuel pump switch, not factory. There's a little clacker pump here that was added, and of course, a connector for a boat fuel tank that I just throw in the interior. Uh, this is a lever here that would have operated those slats on the front opening and closing. Um, that doesn't really, well, it moves. I don't think it's connected. That would go to, huh, that probably could be connected easy. Here on the back side of those slats, you can see they're all hooked up together, and that's the rod that would have connected them all. Um, the rod is disconnected. Someone's welded the top slat open, so uh, they don't operate anymore. It looks like I could probably cut it, but then they're going to fall closed. So we don't want to do that right now. I have to close the hood. This hood is not light. Oops, sorry about that. All right, other side. You see, military vehicles will often have ground straps to things um, just to keep everything from building up static and you know, discharge as needed. Um, let's see, I did actually add an oil pressure gauge down here just to see what it was. It's always been good, so I haven't actually worried about it when I'm driving it. Um, really big alternate, uh, really big generator, that doesn't work. Uh, probably has something to do with this regulator, but I haven't bothered fixing it because I don't drive it that often. Uh, we have a radiator fill cap here. We also have a surge tank up here. Uh, so you have two places you can check the coolant. And let's see what else. Driver's door. Completely missing the latch. There is a latch inside though. This is uh, how we operate it. Kind of. There we go. And so let's go take this thing for a drive.
this is a handy tool to have. It's kind of like having a sledgehammer. You don't need it every day, but when you do, it's really handy. Like, if you need to dismount a tire that doesn't fit on a regular tire machine. Or if you need to compact some trash before taking it to the dump. There's usual motor changes, bed changes, body changes, but there are some limits to what it can do. Luckily, those don't happen too often. So, uh, so far it's done 99% of everything I've asked it to do. and uh, really required no work at all. So, it's a win. Now, you may have noticed, I have two of these. That one doesn't run, but it does have tracks. And um, I bet we could repower it, maybe put another body on it, do something interesting. So, uh, that'll be a fun project. Till next time, keep having fun.